this set of images illustrates an interesting point. And the interesting point is how you can know exactly where something is versus how you can know generally where something like this is. In this image, the bottom slide, I feel like I know exactly where that is. Like, <laughs> I, you know, that's like uh, Forest Park Parkway. Um, totally. I would bet, I would bet like a good, I would bet between five and fifty dollars that that's where that is. Um, you, you, I mean, I'll take that bet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you would. <laughs> that's that that bodes poorly for what I was thinking then. At in the top image, uh, you're you're photographing this truck yard, you know, that like I don't know which one that is or where that is. But I know where I could tell you you could find one. You know, drive from the new zoo all the way down Riverview until it turns into Hall, and like you're bound to find one of these things. You're right. You're actually you're actually re reversed. So you know exactly where the trucks are, and uh, you're a little bit off on the bottom picture. Oh wow! <laughs> so yeah, how about that? On, yeah. The, the top one's Hall Street. What are the odds? <laughs> so yeah, I Those... mean. Yeah, uh, Welcome to Art Brunch on YouTube. I'm the host of Art Brunch and founder of the travel agency, Rick Bowling. Every week, live on Twitch, we bring in a different guest from the contemporary art world to talk about their work with us at a really leisurely pace. Uh, every week, we upload one of our past shows to Apple and Spotify podcasts, as well as YouTube. Uh, YouTube hosts the art part of the conversation, so you can see which slides we're referring to and um, where we're at in the conversation. But if you want to hear all of the other segments, some of the non-art related segments, uh, just check out the podcast. All, all the, the entire show is available over there. Uh, please take a moment to like and subscribe here right now if you can. It's really helpful. We're trying to gain some traction on YouTube. So do that and we appreciate it. Uh, and that way you'll also never miss an episode when it comes out or any of the other videos that we're producing on the channel. Lastly, if you get an opportunity to, and if you're willing to try it out, uh, come watch one of these shows with us live on a Sunday or one of the other days that we do a live stream because it's really what the show, how the show's designed to be viewed. I think it works just great in YouTube though too. So, um, but if you're interested, we'll, we would really love to welcome you over there. All of those links and more are in the description below. So, you know, tap through, do your thing. Our guest this week is Aaron Owens, and I want to read his bio for you. Aaron Owens' work focuses on marginal landscapes and the intersection of human and natural forms. Themes within his artistic practice often touch on questions of surveillance, the splintering of man from nature and popular imagination, and what a holistic approach to modern ecology looks like on the ground and from above. After graduating from Sacramento State with a BS in geography, Aaron began to translate the observational and technical skills essential to the discipline into an artistic practice. His work has been shown at Washington University in St. Louis, the Granite City Arts and Design District, and Wee Galleries in Hong Kong. His work has appeared in View Magazine, Tube Magazine, The Moon Zine, and has been featured in collaboration with music labels Distant Bloom and Denzu Artifacts. He currently lives and works in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, I wish you a good, enjoyable day, evening, morning, whatever the time is, wherever you are, and I hope you enjoy the show. Welcome back. Let's start with the question that we uh, received from Lee Boyd Artist. Um, I'll reiterate it. Interesting, texture, interesting textural abstraction landscapes that the drone pictures create. Uh, Aaron, when you're selecting an image, what is it that you look for, I think, maybe, in the frame? Um, let's see. I mean, so there's, I guess there's, so there's two factors of selection. Uh, one is when you're actually kind of flying the thing, uh, you know, you have the live view. Um, and so that's mostly about uh, place, you know, so it's, it's where you're going. Um, and, and what you're looking at. Um, and so you get some ideas doing some research previous. Uh, so occasionally, you know, you just go on Google Maps or Google Earth or whatever and look at those aerials and be like, you know, there's something there worth checking out. Um, other times it's just, I happen to be here right now. I got 
20 minutes to kill. It's a nice day. The sun's out. Like, let's put the thing up and see what's see what's around. So, um, so that would be part of the selection process. And then once it's up there, you know, I'm fine all around. Uh, looking for those sorts of textures, looking for angles. Um, a lot of it has to do with uh, sun, um, sun clouds, uh, shadows, uh, those sorts of those sorts of things. So, um, so I'm maneuvering through there. But it's on my, you know, it's on my iPhone, so I can only see a certain amount. Um, and depending on how the sun's on my iPhone, sometimes I'm kind of flying, uh, not blind, but you can't tell exactly what the exposure is going to look like, uh, mm. you know, because you just have a glare on your on your phone. So, uh, so then you take it back. Uh, I go through a pretty quick editing process. I don't like to do much. Uh, I play with some of the levels and stuff. Um, and then that becomes uh, its own sort of selection process through there. So uh, I find I find that I'm interested in colors, light, texture. That's you know that's a pretty generic sort of look for for any photography in general. So, um, but as I'm going through what I did shoot, um, I'm often drawn drawn to those sorts of abstract places. Uh, I still do this, but I went through it. Definitely went through a phase where it was like, I'm going to take this landscape image and I'm going to throw it into portrait. You know, you're looking straight down, mm -hmm. so you can you can do that. You can just take the whole image and and bring it all around, um, I see. and not have to worry about you know uh, you know right side up essentially. So um, so that's another sort of uh, selection through there. Um, cool. Yeah, awesome. Well, thanks, Lee Boyd Artist, for the question and. Um... You know, thanks, Aaron, for the answer. I I think inside of that similar vein, um, I did want to pull up this, uh, move over to checking out your work in real time here. Um, let me center this well. Uh, so before we were going on the break, we were talking about confidence in um, drone photography and, and how uh, certain spaces you have to carry a type of confidence to uh, fly the drone over them. Um, and then this is an example of one of those photos that's turned uh, up into a portrait style, um, which I think is really fitting given the subject matter of, of how this kind of acts as a mass portrait um, of end of life. But the thing that I wanted to present here, starting with um, your zine year one, or your zine is titled One Year. Um, this is the first year, and this is the fourth volume of it, and we're on page six. But um, this, I think, is an interesting starting place for us to begin to understand and dissect your work. Because when I was reviewing your slides and, and your zines prior to the show, this is the image that um, immediately kind of produced this uh, guttural anxiety in me of thinking about you as the photographer, you flying a drone over a cemetery. And maybe that's a place that we can start. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, good job on the research, uh, doing the, <laughs> the deep dive all the way, <laughs> all the way into volume one. So uh, <laughs> um, we do the work here. We do the work so you don't have to. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I guess so. Uh, I mean, I, I can talk a little bit about the, the zine process in general. Um, yeah, please uh, do. Maybe not to get uh, too deep into it, but the one year title uh, um, is meant to kind of refer to uh, the cycle of, of the zine. So it's, you know, it's one, it's, it's a monthly zine for, for one year, sort of by volume. And then, um, all the pictures are from one year prior um, and all the redacted journal entries are from one year prior. So um, I put this volume one, I would have put the zine together 2019 um, and these images and words are from 2018. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a way to kind of go back and re-examine. Um, and this, this particular one, volume one, uh, I made 10 copies, uh, one for myself, uh, one for the library zine collection here in St. Louis, um, and then eight that I delivered to uh, friends um, around town. So uh, it was, you know, uh, only hard copies. I decided to digitize them uh, probably about a year and a half after the, they were actually finished. 
um, and then gave them out to the link out to maybe another maybe another 10 people something like that so limited distribution uh, so yeah it's interesting that you picked this this photo uh, I have the same sort of reaction to it mm-hmm. I don't think it's something that I would necessarily have put up on Instagram um, I don't think I, I did um, this is uh, the new St. Marcus Cemetery I think um, just outside across the river to pair okay so it was it's one of those instances where uh, I think if you scroll up um that picture at the bottom i'm, I'm pointing like you guys can yeah uh, <laughs> this picture here <laughs> um that's the river to pair right there so the bottom left hand corner would be the cemetery oh I and see. the top right hand corner would be wilmore park okay so i'm in wilmore park flying the drone um and like i said it's one of those things where i i went out there looking to take a picture of river to pair which uh i go through kind of cycles of being really fascinated by rid of pair by itself. Um, and then suddenly I, I'm flying over the cemetery as well. So I'm, I've taken pictures there as well, not necessarily intending to. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, 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 you know, it's hard to say exactly why I wanted to include the, the cemetery picture and the zine. Um, I think I felt maybe a little bit more comfortable with a limited audience uh, seeing it because it is, it feels sensitive mm-hmm. in a way. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's just, uh, but, but, I, but I like it. Um, I like the composition of it. I like, I do like the subject matter of it. Um, but it is something that, uh, you know, I want to tread lightly with. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's, so I'm, yeah. I'm sure that this is really helping, you know, like the first piece of work that we talk about is this one that you want to tread lightly with. But I think, <laughs> I think, it, I think that like a lot of this work hinges in hinges here. Like this is like a, a really a amazing jumping off point to start to understand some of the things that you're confronted with when you're making work in this fashion and like it, it's not just oh that would look cool you know like i'm going to yeah. to do that there are these elements like first of all like the, in the side of the nature of flying so you were saying and suddenly i'm over the cemetery you know, which isn't an experience that we have like in our physical bodies. But <laughs> what I see is like you're doing like a wide loop, you know, to like come back and do something. And then suddenly you find yourself in this in this cemetery that it happens much quicker than you can walk there, much quicker than you can be there. So on one side, it, it, it does kind of that thing that you mentioned is a crux of the material. But then also like... I, when I see this, I hear the sound of a drone, and I, I hear that like invasive buzzing that I'm like not at all familiar with, and you have much more familiarity with. But that typically, to me, indicates like all sorts of confusion and anxiety. Like, what is this person doing? Um, and then to think about having that experience, like in a state of grief, which we don't see any people here. Um, but thinking about having that experience in a, in a, in a, in a space of grief, but then also like this photo is, is like grief in a lot of ways. Like this photo that you made, I think, you know, is made for a good, a good reason is, is what it feels like. Inten- very intentional. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I guess this isn't really a term that I, uh, it's a term that I'm just thinking of right now. Mm-hmm. Maybe there's like a sort of certain like subtle confrontation uh, with some of the drone photography. Um, mm-hmm. Like it has a, its own. Let me just make fine. Uh, mm-hmm. It the confrontation maybe comes a little bit afterwards. Like I don't necessarily seek to hit people over the over the head with with things. Mm-hmm. Um, Yeah, I mean, I, it's it's a difficult sort of image to, to kind of talk about because I, I definitely mm-hmm. hear what you're saying as far as uh, the sort of invasiveness of. So the so the drone is is it is an interesting tool because it has those sorts of elements on top of it, which are things that are there, but I'm not necessarily inclined to uh, poke at. I think they're they're there anyway, so there's no nest, like real reason for me to um, 
amplify them. Uh, you know, so that includes the idea of these surveillance, surveillance and intrusion, mm. um, and those elements that uh, are, you know, built into our thinking um, mm -hmm. as far as drones go. Um, I think what's interesting about a lot of the drone photography, and this would this wouldn't be an, an exception to that, is uh, we have a we have a certain response to uh, to individual and uh, state surveillance mm -hmm. um, that we don't necessarily have to like corporate surveillance, if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. you know, I brought up Google Earth and Google Maps uh, earlier, um, and that's something that I'm always a little that I'm interested in whenever it comes to conversations. Is like essentially this image is available to everyone. Yes, um, uh, you know, it's it's a flat down. I don't typically do any sort of flattening that uh, um, you would if you were wanting to make a map, but uh, um, you know this is one of those images where you could turn it all which way and it would it would still be uh, it would still make sense. Um, and yeah, so so that sort of comes into this sort of uh, idea of privacy. Like it's it's a different thing for me to fly a drone over a cemetery than it is for um, uh, for us to look it up on on Google Maps or, or Google Earth. Uh, and it's a it's an odd sense of privacy or expected privacy to it uh, that is I wouldn't say one way or the other but I think it's definitely worth exploring and and, and thinking about uh, and hopefully these images uh, have that sort of layering to them yeah yeah and that, um, that's why I wanted to start with this is because um, a lot of these images look uh, there are a lot of images that look fun that indicate leisure that indicate industry that indicate waste um, but I think in all of these, it's important for our viewers and viewers of your work to understand this, uh, this fundamental question at like the intersection of what you are doing is like, these are being taken with these kinds of ideas in question. Like you, it, it might be more detached from that when we go to, um, when we go to my next slide, uh, which is, I'll give you a primer which this is my next slide um, that I want to talk about. So like yeah. the conversation here doesn't start there because we're like, who are these people that own these land? And like, who are these people that are tearing this shit up? Like, do we care about this industry? But it is just as potentially illegal, just as potentially invasive. Like the workers who showed up to work there didn't necessarily like want to be photographed or agreed to be videoed that day. Um, but I think that the easiest way that we can access that is through this image. And then um, hopefully for viewers of the show, you can remember the feeling of this kind of uh, the, the questions that this image raises as you look through the rest of Aaron's work, because it's, it's married, it's married to the work. Um, and I think this is just the place that it's most clear. Um, we have another question in chat that I want to uh, share with you, Aaron. Um, Lee Boyd Artist, thanks again for the question, uh, says, the graveyard picture reminds me of Braille and asks, when you hear people's reaction to your work, do you see elements in your work that you've never noticed? Uh, yeah, I mean, for sure. Um, I'm, I, I'm pretty, I'm familiar, or I feel familiar with the sort of technology, uh, the drone stuff. Um, and I don't necessarily distinguish it from, uh, I think the term we used the other day was terrestrial mm -hmm, <laughs> photography. <yeah. laughs> um, but I, yeah, I, 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 I see, I don't see a whole lot of difference between those and uh, all of it, you know, uh, the terrestrial photography, the drone photography, um, some of the work that I've, I've used, uh, you know, publicly available uh, um, aerials mm -hmm. from um, all that stuff. Uh, but it becomes uh, it becomes more evident whenever I put it out there to people that uh, the drone stuff has a whole other sort of angle to them that uh, uh, that people bring. Um, that's exciting, and I, I I always enjoy that sort of uh, take on things. But it's not necessarily something that I uh, set out for, um, like. Uh, yeah, I guess if that mm -hmm. uh, if that hopefully answers some stuff. Cool, well, thanks. I, I feel like it's it's an interesting conversation. Like there's a 
truly 20,000 ways for this to go, but something I'm curious about just from the process, like as a fellow photographer myself, like I think about like photography specifically, there's a lot of like when you take pictures of your, of your world, like that's tends to be your subject is like, there's a lot of creative meandering or, you know, uh, I've joked with uh, our, our good friend, Jack Arlen on here uh, about radical meandering and that like actually meandering in itself is kind of radical. So we don't really need to call it that on top of that, you know, people talk about this, but um that like you know a photographer will kind of go through spaces like physically terrestrially and then be like that's really cool but then when you're using drone and you're and you know that you're like a, a drone can capture something similar to that of something like google maps or google earth like i'm curious where does your process of supposed like creative meandering happen because like i don't i i i almost refuse to believe because then that just you're just too genius for me to deal with that like you just knew that this would be a good picture. You know, like there has to be some sort of accident. You can't just be, <laughs> I oh, refuse. I mean, yeah, it's, no, it's, but... it's, all, it's all accident. Okay. So, so uh, I mean, so oddly, I mean, I see a lot of connection between uh, the uh, the cemetery and these pictures. Um, mm -hmm. Like, so uh, the story for for both of these, you know, I was I was in Wilmore Park looking at the River to Pair, uh, ended up taking a handful of pictures of the cemetery um these i was uh, along the missouri river um if i'm not mistaken uh i was i was along the missouri river and uh this is a quarry in st charles county that uh um i didn't know was there <laughs> you know until i put the drone up and i like you know the drone the drone has its little uh you know the camera on its gimbal you go down and up you know that's the extent of what you can move the camera mm -hmm. um and so I'm looking down, I'm flying around the river and stuff like that. And then like, I bring the camera up and I'm just like, oh, oh shit, there's a, there's a quarry on the other side here. So that's how these happened. Um, wow. uh, and they both exist on this sort of edge space. So, mm -hmm. you know, Missouri, uh, or sorry, St. Louis, um, you know, we are this river town and um, what we choose, what that essentially means is we, we have our, uh, our industry and our sort of zone our zoning along our rivers are for, uh, are not for like, uh, people, um, at least not like alive, uh, moving people, you know? So, um, there's a reason why, uh, new St. Marcus is where it's at by the river to pair. Um, you know, there's a whole history in St. Louis of, um, uninterring. Is that the right? right? moving moving dead folks uh, okay you know out of out of the city into into oh, okay. new uh cemeteries so you know around uh the city there's you know um st charles rock road is a good example there's three or four of those uh big uh cemeteries up there um, along kind of the ring of st louis city and those inner suburbs um, and a lot of those uh, cemeteries hold folks that were buried in the city you know and they moved them um, because they needed to they needed that land for the living. So, um, so what we do on those sorts of edge spaces, I think, is telling about the general society, and and so that's the 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 link I would bring up between uh, the cemetery and these sorts of uh, um, extraction uh, photos um, mm -hmm. is kind of their placement, uh, the general happenstance as far as my personal story goes with them, um, and then of course there's there is that sort of uh, difference between organizations. So. Um, these these photos are a, a more uh, they're still very human in their organization uh, but they feel organic uh, in the sense of like angle of repose you know so uh, piles and, and how uh, material interacts with itself um, and gravity whereas mm -hmm. the the cemetery uh, is obviously a very right angle uh, driven uh, <laughs> sort of organization uh, which is always uh, you know human um, you know, uh, anytime you see right angles, everybody knows that it's it's human. Um, when it comes to more rounded and stuff like that, uh, we associate that with uh, an organic form. Um, so, uh, yeah, the the thing that comes up for me is this process of digging and burying, for sure. The you know the difference between unearthing something and then by like putting these things back into the ground, um, and and then also. Uh, there's something about how like the process of digging, um, the process of like unearthing or or you know gathering materials, 
yes, there is a right angle in these machines, but the you know they're not putting those those materials right into train cars, you know, and like there's a reason for that. So to successfully and with efficiency like render these products out of the earth, um, I have this idea that these tools have to work like more natural tools. You know, they have to just break shit and <laughs> be big and like move dirt in whichever way like dirt wants to move, right? And and then there are certain ideas about how the more natural these digging processes get, even though they become more technological simultaneously, the more efficient that they become. And then they create these like subsets of um, something in between, like what are these sand dunes? You know, like it's something in between nature and human. Uh, so on one hand, you have the like very human and, and the very nature, the digging and the burying but then you also, in your work, explore the like erosion as kind of like a, a middle space between those as well. Which I don't think I have actually a slide for erosion, but it's something that <laughs> that <laughs> I'm sure that we will we will find you know rather easily um, in in your work. But that erosion kind of acts as that that middle space there too. Um, I do have a, a couple, the next thing that I want to bring up is, um, give me just a second here while I, uh, navigate to it. Um, we, uh, we were radically meandering there, Rick. You did it. You got to erosion. It made sense. <laughs> it full circle. <laughs> so um, I'm moving over to year two, but yeah, go ahead, Jake. Well, I'll just, I'll, and just to kind of like, I'm, I'm just strictly very curious, like, I feel like we answered it, but I, I'm just curious too, like in a very like point blank sort of way, like do you use Google Maps or any of these things as ways to find locations or is it more just like that seems like a cool area like in your head and then you just go there and figure it out? Or is it like, I imagine your job clearly has like gotten you to places where you're like, actually I need to come back here on my own time. You know, cause I just, I, I, I yeah. love the feeling of like, you could be sitting in the comfort of your home and just finding these places, but knowing that like, it ain't been taken a picture of properly until I show up. You know what I mean? Like the joy that I, you could open up your freedom space to go find cool locations to your computer feels very amazing as a phot photographer to me as an idea. Yeah, no, I mean, that's definitely part of it. I mean, so, so that, so the first scene uh, is uh, like I said, the first scene, the first zine that I put together, that first volume, um, those images that we just looked at were, you know, I had, I probably, I got the drone maybe that January. So that whole sort of uh, late winter, spring air time uh, was, you know, I was, I was, I was really active. Um, yeah. uh, any excuse I could uh, to, to fly the thing. Um, so it is, uh, you know, I mean, I, it's hard to say exactly. Now my process is probably different at that time. Uh, it was, there was definitely this uh, opening up uh, um, Google or uh, in my day job, you know, with, with GIS, uh, just looking at our aerials that we have for the county um, and the surrounding area and just being like, I need to go, I need to go see that. Like, um, and quarries are an obvious one. I mean, if you, if, if you look at uh, the big quarries uh, around town, like you, if you're looking at just an aerial of St. Louis City and St. Louis County, like immediately you're going to see the quarries because they're just they're these bright white limestone blots, um, like little like paint like paint blots type of thing yeah. on the map. Um, and so immediately they're just like, I what is that? Like I gotta go see it. Um, and uh, there's such huge spaces um, that they just respond really well to uh, to drones. Um, I mean, and then the other part of that is that I should mention is um, the drone has its own sort of uh, limits. Um, and luckily, my, my interests coincide with a lot of the places that are suitable for drone stuff. Um, but like, you're not doing like street photography downtown with a drone, you know, yeah. um, and like, I, I'm, I, I don't. I don't fly the drone over people. Um, I 
do my best not to fly the drone over, you know, residences and like look at people's backyards and, and that sort of stuff. Um, not that I wouldn't necessarily be interested in, in stuff like that. It just doesn't feel, <laughs> you yeah. know, proper, you know, uh, um, like the idea of getting like winter, winter pools or something like that in people's totally. backyards would be like great photos, but mm -hmm. like, I'm not going to fly, fly the drone over and <laughs> in people's backyards, even, yeah. you know, it's just not something I'm going to do. So, um, so yeah, some of it is just, uh, looking at Google. Other parts are, uh, these are the sorts of zones that I have access to and that I'm interested in. Um, and so I'll just, uh, you know, some of it's about being on site and being able to find a place to park and being inconspicuous to fly the thing. So I have my, my areas that, uh, I feel safe in to fly it. Um, and you know, it, it's, it's really kind of a mix of, of those, um, where I'm at right now is, uh, I probably have more sites that I am, uh, interested in documenting over time and that I've become familiar with. So it's a little bit less of, uh, let's find new places and it's more about, let's go back to these places, um, and see what's happening. Um, so, uh, yeah, anyway, there's, there's definitely a mix as far as that goes. Sometimes it's just, uh, I need to fly the drone. Like I haven't flown the drone in a, in a month. Like, let's go get some pictures. Yeah. Like, uh, and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll somewhere in there, I'll make a decision as to where to go. So. Mm, absolutely. Yeah, good. Um, I think in the chat, a couple of our viewers say that this feels like fourth wall breaking, like this drone photography feels like very present, like this is something that could be, you know, a live feed, you know, right now, like this is transporting us to um, these these different spaces. And I think that's something that's unique to the aerial photography, because um, like we don't think of these terrestrial photos as necessarily like the same kind of like video feed maybe maybe because we're more familiarized with them or uh, the amount of um, human scaled perspective oriented photographs that we see is so high that we have like more nuanced uh, understandings of that um, something that we are touching on that I want to um, try to clarify with this set of images uh, this set of images so you you know you also take these terrestrial photographs and um, for me I feel that this set of images illustrates an interesting point and the interesting point is how you can know exactly where something is versus how you can know generally where something like this is uh, Rejon Proto thanks for the follow Thanks for following us. Um, so in this image, the bottom slide, I feel like I know exactly where that is. Like, <laughs> I, you know, that's like uh, Forest Park Parkway. Um, totally. And, is that right? <laughs> and uh, so that is like a, a series of buildings that I've seen. And I think I, I, I would bet, I would bet like a good, I would bet between five and $50 that that's where that is. Um, oh, I mean, I'll take that bet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you would. <laughs> That's that that bodes poorly for what I was thinking then. Um, then, uh, at in the top image, uh, you're you're photographing this truck yard. You know that like I don't know which one that is or where that is, but I know where I could tell you you could find one. Um, you could find one, not that one, but you could find one, right? You know, you go go up to Riverview and drive from, you know, drive from the new zoo all the way down Riverview until it turns into Hall, and, like, you're bound to find one of these things. But also, you're not going to find anywhere along Riverview that bottom photo. Um, you know, like, Again, I think I know where it is, but whatever. I guess I don't. Uh, so there's there's this difference between like in in these two photos, like site specificity and how uh, for people who like if you know you know you have a a very accurate sense of where one of these random kind of obscure organizations of materials is, and then you have a general sense of where uh, a truck bay could potentially be. Yeah, so uh, um, 
to get I guess I, what, what, I, what I'll start with uh, as I'm stumbling is um, you're right you're actually you're actually re reversed so you know exactly where the truck are and uh you're a little bit off on the bottom picture oh wow <laughs> so yeah, how about that on, yeah <laughs> the, the top one's hall street uh and the bottom one is uh that you're you're really close it's it's that 44 um 44 and jefferson uh that's the back side of those lafayette um oh uh I, deal damn. so like that intersection of 55 44 there um what are the odds <laughs> so yeah i those... mean yeah, uh it, yeah. it definitely you know it feels the bottom one i get what you're saying though like the bottom one uh feels specific and um and also in a way like i know this place i know these i you know i've been here before that sort of thing um and the top one feels a little bit more um kind of generic uh, uh or like placed um like something that could be kind of picked up and put down anywhere uh, mm -hmm. I, if that's is that kind of what you're uh pointing towards yeah yeah for sure and and i think that there's uh that's something that you explore in your work and is executed really well here um so well so that like it has the opportunity to flip right which we we just illustrated <laughs> well yeah i mean these are uh so i mean the, the the photos are interesting um you know these are these particular ones are interesting that i I really got in the habit of uh, of just carrying, taking my camera with me um, mm -hmm. everywhere. Uh, you know, it's just you can't take pictures without a, without having the camera with you. So um, I still do this, uh, but I, I went through a, a phase where you know these are all taken outside with my passenger window down and me reaching across the passenger seat, just like like it is like you know playing with shutter speed so that uh, i can manage to keep the blur down and stuff um, mm. or increase the blur if i want to um so they're they're to me they're a, a lot about just you know in the context of the zine especially a uh, sort of documenting of how did i get from one place to the other um and like a little bit of shedding light on my general sort of day and interactions and and where life uh takes takes me um and yeah composition wise i think they both they 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 speak to different sort of interests of of mine you know one is that hall street corridor which is kind of endlessly fascinating um mm -hmm. to me because there's just it's really kind of the the guts of st louis um there's just so much sort of action and stuff uh that is necessary for the city to function that we don't want to think about and it all just gets placed there um junkyard jail truck stop yeah i mean there's uh you know there's the giant coal depot um whenever you get off uh is that it's not salisbury it's the other one um Al, um adeline or uh adeline adelaide or adeline. yeah adelaide um, you know there's that giant uh coal depot um there's the the workhouse that's down on the street there yep um there's all the uh there's like a mulch depot there's the giant uh shingle mountain of recycled stuff um but anyway i mean like all that stuff is necessary for uh st louis to function uh and as far as our sort of tax base is concerned mm -hmm. um you know the big the big players in St. Louis are uh, nonprofits, so they're they're not playing they're not paying property taxes and stuff. Um, these are the type of places that are uh, a huge part of our tax base still. So mm. uh, you know and it's that that riverfront sort of mentality that carries over from the original sort of white settlement of the area. So there's just a ton of layers to it, um, and so any chance I can. Uh, to drive on Hall Street, um, uh, I, I like to take that route um, just to kind of see what's happening um, and throw my camera out the window to to see what I can get. Uh, you know, so um, I agree. anyway, that is a know, it's a road that I take to go to my dad's house when I drive to my dad's okay. house. So I ha I have like a kinship um, with that too. Uh, Ty Matthews, thanks for the follow. Um, Rejon Proto, I'm not sure what the link is. I permitted you to post links, so uh, I will check that out in a little bit. So I want to I want to give you space to finish that. Sorry, sorry to to cut you off if I did. 
No, I mean, I think I was on a bit of a, a bit of a ramble. <laughs> so, you know, these things come back to that sort of geography background um, mm-hmm. of mine. So like uh, going through those places tells you tells you things um, about where you're at and the city and the people and the interaction of the people and the land. Uh, um, and so, you know, both these photos and the majority of photos that I take are uh, a sort of exploration of that, if nothing else, just myself trying to make sense of where the hell I'm at, mm, <laughs> you know? Totally. Um, and the photos are nice because you can go back to them and start picking them apart. Uh, but it's a general mindset of uh, getting to those places to take those photos uh, that uh, are equal amounts of that as well. So, it's, As far as familiarity goes, like if was to expand on that layer a little bit more, but like even those particular photos that we had up, uh, I, I started to actually kind of look at them as if they were drone photos, sort of. And it's it's interesting to think like, if whatever your perspective is, you know, you're you're just looking out the window at the at these buildings on the side of a highway. That if you were to pretend it was this looking down, that you kind of see these recurring themes that not only just from above but from the side, and that really you can kind of create these these new planes in that way. But even but even if it's from above from the side, it c- gets confusing, but it does feel familiar at mm-hmm. the same time. And I, I think that it's interesting too to revisit those spaces too when even some of them are as is a snapshot literally from out the window of a car or to like a very like calculated meaning very like very uh intentioned photo from a drone which is to say like am i abiding by laws am i abiding by you know making sure people's privacy and stuff like that so i feel like mentally it feels that but i also feel like like create like just physically the material like that you're pro- you're posting kind of has sharing i don't want to say posting that like has these this space of like where like all lines are being blurred you know across memory across forms across subject matter across plane like where you are physically on the earth almost yeah so i i get in trouble when i say this before uh (laughs) um like i and i and i tend to believe it i i get i get people's hesitation when i say something like this but i i generally kind of fall into the camp of like things things just kind of are like (laughs) like some things just are you know like they just exist and they're there and uh i think that shines through a lot i don't know if it shines through but comes through uh, or reads in a lot of my photography um and probably why i'm drawn to photography uh and drone stuff is it doesn't feel like I realize that there is a process and like you are making the photo uh, in a, in a, in a sense or whatever. But for me, like the excitement of it is like these places just are like this, like these, like the pool, the pool just is, you know, Mm -hmm. like, and I'm not doing anything like anything to, to alter that. Like, um, and I feel the same way, especially when I'm doing like, uh, like the drive by sort of photography or whatever, like, these places just are, you know, and I'm just being a witness to it. Um, and like I said, there's, I, there's definitely some arguments uh, around that sort of mentality and, and, and things. And I don't mean to take away from uh, like the idea of, of making um, uh, and the, the idea of uh, the artist bringing things to that. But uh, like I said, that's just kind of my, my sort of gut, uh what i go on as far as photography goes is like Mm -hmm. um yeah i want to jump in there and and say that um from my perspective i think i think it's good to hold space for both people who are in like evidence Uh, there's there's this interesting uh juxtaposition between process-oriented work and evidence-based work um so people who are in the acts of creating to produce a product and those people who are in, engaged in acts of creating because this act of creating satisfies some deep itch and then products like arise out of the nature of scratching that itch. Um, and, and here, you know, I think as we've illustrated throughout this, uh, a, a large part of your creative practice is traveling, is uh, wink, wink, is moving to these spaces 
that you're discovering, that you're finding. It's, it's um, the creative process is having open eyes and, you know, these products uh, in some ways become evidence of your work, uh, evidence of that work that you're doing and might not even be potentially like the core of what your creative practice is. And for other people, it's much more product focused and um, like you said, like there's space for those creators too, who are who are making things that are new, versus people who are having experiences that are new and are receiving evidences from those experiences. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I love and these I, pool photos, though. Um, I do. <laughs> yeah, uh, Jake. Well, it it feels. I mean, you're a geographer for God's sake. Like, it, yeah. You're like, I feel like the mission is like, like if geography was like to be broken down to a sentence, it'd be like how do it be mm -hmm. and then you you're there to be like it do be this yeah, way be like this <laughs> like like i feel like you're you're like perfectly marrying that because you're just like here's what it is but then here's how i also want to show you how it mm -hmm. is you know and i i feel like there's a lot of conversation especially in like the political world of like the idea of like a good faith or a bad faith argument or good faith like mm. use of certain things and i feel like it feels very unsinister the way you're using a drone in my mm -hmm. opinion. And I don't mean to qualify the work whatsoever, but I feel like that's what gives it a lot of beauty in that like these pool images specifically too, which I am totally over the moon over too, of like, it's, it's, it's like 20 things at once because it, it just is that it is what it is, you know, mm -hmm. and people are able to get out of that what they need to. And, and yeah, I think, um, I think you I I think that's good. I think it's good to recognize kind of again where these things are springing from. Like where is the spring of creativity? And that like really kind of fills up this body of work. Um first of all there are no people here, right? Which we return to that idea of surveillance of like very quickly creepy, right? Like very quickly, not something that you would do. But um, this is from uh, uh, volume eight, so this is August, and and then you you know it brings up questions for me that are like, why aren't there people in the pool? And and then it's either like there's some cholera breakout that's taking place that I didn't hear about in the news, or it's early in the morning. Uh, it doesn't seem like it can be late in the evening. Um, but then this is also indicating uh, where I kind of want to take us, where I kind of want to leave us off before our next break, is ideas of leisure and how this creative practice for you also feels like a leisure practice. That like you are doing this as a method of working, but it seems like you're enjoying it. Yeah. So I mean, so this is uh, this would fall into the camp of like me, uh, me sort of. Uh, the overlap between like my day job and and art practice. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, this this was a project that I was given. Uh, it was a different project at this site um, to do things, and then it's like, well, I'm going to take pictures while you know while I, while I'm there. You know, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna use my like uh, you know I don't smoke cigarettes, so I'm gonna use my I'm gonna use my 15 minute smoke break to like fly my own drone. <laughs> yeah. You know, so. Um, yeah, there's, there's, I think that's part of why I landed on, uh, uh, maybe not landed on, but uh, why the zine sort of concept works for me um, is I kind of struggle to tie it all together um, in a sort of, um, you know, a, a typical sort of like curated fashion, you know, like, uh, um, you know, I've tried to, I've tried to organize images and themes of, uh, extraction and uh and erosion and uh you know those sorts of uh ideas and i feel like they always kind of come up short and the zine is helpful because it it just gives me a nice sort of framework to put things in so uh it it makes sense within the zine to have this you know pool images next to uh you know terrestrial images of a junkyard next to a quarry images because they're just that's just what i did you know that's just <laughs> that's just my life you know <laughs> yeah. how it, um how it do be <laughs> so i can you know i uh, the chronological order of it gives me this excuse uh to juxtapose uh, things because that's just the general flow of of life 
um, for me. And you got these pool um, these pool blues, you know, starting to sneak in in the junkyard. And then boom, yeah, and there's you know, you know and there's uh, there's just obvious uh, you know the other part of the zine stuff is it's uh, it's all about my own sort of you know the chron- the chronological nature of it gives it a certain excuse, but um, it's heavy on editing, you know. Mm-hmm. So uh, and that's you know that's obvious uh, like when you look at it, um, it's a way to reassess and uh, and edit and pair. So um, so I so I can move past what the images are and start playing with, you know, which ones do I actually enjoy the most, you know, which ones actually play off each other uh, um, well, and those sorts of things, as opposed to like, getting caught up in uh, the deeper nature of them. So um, that distance is nice. Yeah. So, um, you know, a lot of the zine stuff was kind of a a reaction to uh, the Instagram, you know, the Insta part of the Instagram. So, um, you know, I had a, I had a, I had my love affair with, uh, with social media. Um, and then I, the zine was kind of like a way to see if I could get that sort of, uh, dopamine, uh, uh, from other <laughs> means, you know, loop. so, yeah. uh, and not to take, you know, Instagram pro- provides a certain thing that oh, and yeah. social media in general provides a certain thing that, uh, is, you know, is useful, um, and is pleasurable and stuff. But, uh, I'd say this was the zine was a, a nice way to sort of uh, remind myself that it doesn't need to be um, immediate. Like mm-hmm. I can I can take time, and there's uh, there's very uh, positive things that come from uh, distance and uh, reassessing and and change and and all those things as well. So great. Um, well, I think that's a good place to uh, take a, a brief break. So we're going on our second break here for the show. And I do want to get into kind of like the instantaneousness. I have I have some rant cooking up inside of me about hashtag latergram that I think is like a really silly thing that we used to do. Um, yeah. But but we'll get back into it. So uh, say goodbye to our friends for now and say hello to me. Thanks everyone for tuning in, all the new followers, people being active in the chat. Now's a good time for you to, across the break, um, post some questions that you have for Aaron, uh, some things that you want to hear him respond directly to, and we'll be able to intersperse those through the final half of the conversation. Um, Thank you all for listening. Uh, I I appreciate these moments in the chat. You all are always welcome to speak up, but I also know sometimes it feels good just to listen. So feel free to always lurk. Um, but also, please, now's a good time to start asking questions for Aaron that we'll get to when we get back from our break. We're going to take a quick 10-minute break, uh, and we'll be back here at about 12, 11. If you need something to do in the meantime, you can do us a favor and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's something that holds the archives of these talks um, for later and something that I'm working to make a really good resource to categorize all of this information that we are creating with our wonderful guests to support the legacy of the work that they do. If you're interested in checking out Aaron's Instagram, give him a follow over there because he'll know you followed because you're watching the show today and that'll make him feel good about us. So just go shoot him a follow. You really won't regret it. And we'll see you back here around 12.12. Maybe if I know which button to hit. Thanks again. Hello, everyone. We're back. And, uh, you know, I think that second break for our viewers is a good opportunity to get, like, another cup of coffee, you know, to re-caffeinate. Um, because usually, like, 12, between 12 and 2 is when I decide if I'm having more coffee or if I'm going to not have any more coffee that day. So I hope you got some coffee. If not, I hope you're staying hydrated. Um, We're getting back into this conversation that we have with Aaron. Uh, The thing that keeps happening in my mind is um, Aaron's name is Aaron Owens, and then his Instagram is Owens Aaron. And every time I say Aaron, even though I know that's his name, I really have to wonder if his name is Owen. So Rick, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in there and say I have the same issue. Yeah, you're, you're you're not the only ones. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you've been greeted as, "Hey, Owens, what's up, man?" Or "What's up, oh, Owen?" Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I I I realize a bit with regret about the name, but uh, I, it's something I've stuck with. So um, there's like <laughs> there's no going back now. 
No, oh, for sure. I mean, there is. There can't, it can't be done very easily. But. <laughs> it's a good shtick. It's a good thing. It's a good could vibe. do it if we wanted to. New masses, thanks for the follow. I'm not sure what's happening with my follower alerts today. So they're not pop. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there's one. But that's that's just like uh, no one actually donated. Um, oh, don't get excited. Okay. It's like, wow, John coming through. <laughs> no, no, it's, I was just testing it. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with the <laughs> alerts today. <laughs> That's the only way we get money. If it's a test. Wow. Really cool. Yeah. Um, but yes, again, new masses. Thanks for following. Uh, definitely want to shout you out and appreciate that. So we're going to hop back into it here. Um, the thing that I, I think we kind of left off talking about leisure and and talking about kind of how this you know process uh per preside presides uh your honorable presidement <laughs> um how art how <laughs> yeah art court that's our new show <laughs> um where like we have a plaintiff and <laughs> they're and a defendant obviously uh and the person is like God. suing the other person for like biting their style right yeah. And then we're art court where yeah. we preside over that. And we have a, a comically oversized gavel that we bang on various things as, as a, as a, well, and every, a brand everybody's element. guilty. Yeah. Oh, true. Uh, well, they, uh, <laughs> that's the, <laughs> that's the, tag that's the whole, whole catch of it all. It's like, you're never innocent. You're uh -huh. always guilty. So no, that's good. Yeah. Maybe, maybe Owens Aaron should be the, uh, <laughs> maybe it's the honorable Owens Aaron who's presiding yeah. over art court. There we go. It can be your show on the travel it agency. Sounds like a pretty easy, pretty, pretty easy gig. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've I've considered the evidence, and yes. <laughs> yeah, you're definitely guilty. Yeah. Just like every episode. <laughs> exactly. Okay. I mean, there's a there's a lot of money to be made in 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 judge shows. Mm -hmm. That much yeah. is true. That's so, why they persist. somebody was uh, I was listening to this um this show that my friend Moira Smith sent me called like random tape uh it's like a show podcast on spotify um people might like that but in one of the random tapes somebody was talking about how they ended like they did something they destroyed somebody's property or whatever and they ended up on judge judy hmm. but like that leads me to believe that you don't just end up on judge du judy yeah. you know like you did that and then somehow <laughs> Like, how does it even go? Like, the person's like, this is a Judge Judy crime. Let me submit it before I actually sue them to see if it's going to, like, be a good case. And then not only are you getting sued, but you also are, like, getting sued in Judge Judy's court. Really kind of strange. I don't know how that works. I, I just There's thought it was all fake. There. but lot to uncover, for sure. Anyways, maybe I'm off, off topic. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, these are these are the things that we need to know if we're going to move forward with yeah. art court. So oh, yeah. This is like, yeah, research 101. So yeah. I think um, we're all about research here. Yeah. For those of you who know Judge Judith Scheindland, uh, please shoot us a DM. <laughs> Let's move over here to the the first volume of OK, the first the third volume. See, I, I, the terminology, I've messed it up. So this is year three, or volume three, and uh, inside of that, it's number one. Um, so this is the most recent, seven days recent, uh, maybe, or, or uh, 38 days recent iteration of the zine here. Uh, and, I, and I guess I'm curious, uh, you know, kind of how, how you're feeling about this, because this is cl so much closer in proximity than the other ones, but still is a year and a month or prior, right? Yeah. Uh, so I mean, it's it's been a it's been kind of a whole uh, journey through these things. Um, like I said, the first one uh, was very sort of uh, low key, um, trying to find a sort of footing, um, something I had never done or experienced or experimented with before. So. Um, at the end of that, I was having some difficulty figuring out how to get it printed. Um, had a, a couple of frustrations as far as logistics stuff goes. Um, and I was like, I don't know if I'm going to bother with doing it again. Uh, the idea of having something called One Year Volume 2 did have an appeal. Um, just 
for the silliness of it. Um, mm. And so, uh, and, but, and, and then I had, uh, you know, I had good friends that uh, um, one in particular that uh, I was delivering it to that uh, kind of wouldn't allow me to stop. So, uh, okay. <laughs> and I think I was getting, I was getting stuff out of it. Uh, I was getting a lot out of it actually. And um, it's been really uh, a, a fun and useful thing for me to, to compile each, each, uh, each month. So, Generally, I, generally I get it together. I try not to start on it until about uh, halfway through each month to give like that full sort of year uh, distance. Okay. Uh, it feels a bit like cheating if I were to start it like at the first of the month and start going through. So I've yet to start on uh, my February stuff. I'll probably open that up here uh, next week and start uh, piecing through uh, what all I did last year, uh, last February, um, and start kind of going through. So. So yeah, and then this uh, this volume three is uh, even more um, uh, a next sort of level or step forward or step in some direction, uh, and that is the first one that I've really kind of gone public with. Um, mm. You know, uh, the other ones were all pretty much you know invite only, um, not really invite, just me like dumping my issues on you, like whether you want it or not. Uh, so. Um, like literally at your doorstep, me just kind of delivering this odd, odd pamphlet of my uh, inner thoughts mm -hmm. um, for you to like uh, go through at your leisure. Um, and so, I mean, essentially, so I, so this last round, I made it more of a point to once I had it digital, digi digitized to give them out to a broader audience. Um, and Jake was on that sort of list because Jake's always been uh, um, appreciative of my work and uh has been friendly and um i thought he might enjoy him um and so uh he quickly asked me if i wanted to be on the show and i said yes and then uh it dawned on me shortly after that that i was like well it wouldn't make much sense for me to be on here with like uh talking about things that no one else <laughs> like gets to see so uh so maybe it was some sort of subconscious way of me being like, well, let's let's take the next step of uh, of like introducing the larger public to this uh, this project. Um, and this year is going to be special because it's you know it's starting off with me reviewing the year twenty twenty, mm -hmm. um, which uh, I think will be of interest for me uh, to to go through. Um, yeah, to jump in there, uh, the thing that I immediately feel is that. Like the, first of all, the question, I think it begs the question, why aren't these made, like, why are these a year behind, right? And I think that to answer that question, we can use this example of what is going to take place this year with the project of uh, describing your experiences through um, all of the events of last year. A few come to mind, honestly. <laughs> at this point, um, but all all of these events, and if you were writing these journals, and if you were taking these photographs as something to share to like document that month at the end of that month, I have to believe that the work that you would make would be much less authentic, and that like you would have certain responsibilities to like speak more about like motivating people to be happy or you know to like be sharing things that add positivity to the situation rather than creating this uh authentic view of like what your internal space is um so for me this is a, a good indicator as to like the power of that year difference and i'll be interested to see how you experience that space because i'm sure the tendency is still like well a year from now i want people to know this or a year from now on people to feel this but it feels more authentic yeah, yeah i mean like the, the so the the words are definitely you know they've probably become an increasing part of uh the zines um and that's probably it's partly at least intentional in that uh you know that so the first year that i put them together i was dealing with uh um with past material that was written without the expectation of being used in any way. So, mm -hmm. uh, so there's a, a bit more rawness of them. Um, I find that they're a less probably, uh, more uneven in a way. 
like I felt bad kind of giving them to some people. And when they read through them, they're like, oh man, like Aaron's in, Aaron's in a bad place. <laughs> you know, because like <laughs> the only time I would bother to write in a journal was, you know, when I would, felt like I needed to write in a journal, you know, uh, and like get sort of emotions out uh, in a constructive way. Um, and that starts to change a little bit uh, in, um, in a way that, it, that I've enjoyed in that it becomes a, a practice um, to write now. So uh, it feels a sort of responsibility. So the, the words that I'm working with here in volume three, you know, I'm, I'm journaling and I'm, I'm being honest with myself at the time, uh, but there's also this sort of responsibility to my future self next year to have material to work with. Mm -hmm. um, and then it becomes, uh, I think what's been interesting as well is the words themselves uh, become with that distance from a, with a, with a year's distance, it, it gives me a sort of, uh, you know, it's not, it's not objective, but they become a sort of uh, raw material. Uh, the, the feel of them become less more, much less personal. So I think you're right as far as if I was trying to write this and publish it immediately, um, there they would be a much different thing than whenever I have a year removed to be like that was a different person that wrote those, mm -hmm. um, and I can just like chop them up to make them uh, be um, how I feel now, you know. And there's this sort of weird overlap uh, between persons. Um, so, uh, so yeah, this this year is going to be interesting. I mean, to be honest, it's going to be. Uh, I think people might be a little bit disappointed. <laughs> and my take on 2020 because uh you know that's on brand for 2020 so yeah. you, you, you're working within yeah, the right I mean, materials it's, <laughs> yeah uh it's like i there's been a lot of suffering around you know around this whole thing and i and you know i feel really guilty for uh like how lucky i have been throughout the whole process mm -hmm. um and how kind of like i'm i'm introverted by nature and so a lot of a lot of the things that people have had to deal with um, that have been, uh, you know, cause of causes of, of real pain and suffering for people have been, uh, in a sense, like a relief for me to live this sort of way. You know, that's that's not 100 percent always, but yeah. um, the role that I found myself falling into of routine, being at home, uh, offered their own sorts of uh, pleasures. Um, so that comes through as well in those journals you know it's um it's a lot of me just like looking out the window and, and like describing squirrels yeah <laughs> you know that sort of thing that's so good I, you, you know, couldn't publish that in february you know i couldn't publish that in april of last year yeah like yeah. if you're worried about covid spend some time looking out your window with squirrels <laughs> it's not a good look it's like the but but also i think that like I, I think that it's super valid and really good to have these conversations because I know I know Jake and I have talked about this. Um, we feel incredibly fortunate and lucky to. I mean, there are definitely it's definitely an indication of our privilege uh, and um, a good opportunity to you know share wealth and and be mindful of people who don't have the same choices that we have. Um, you know, grocery workers and fast food yeah. restaurants, employees, and, you know, showing, showing that love when we can, I think was really good. Um, and then also, I, this is just how I'm feeling right now. Like I'm also introverted in a lot of ways and public life and like what was required of me to be a human in the art world uh, in, or in the professional world was like damaging to me. It was like always, always constantly damaging to me. Uh, like I just am not built for that. And I was able to heal a lot of social wounds through this time with this opportunity that none of us could have predicted. Um, so, you know, I, I think for other people, the opposite is true. But, but for me, that was, that was my experience is there was a lot of time to heal social wounds last year. Definitely. Well, and I'm just curious, like Aaron, so like you've, you call these redacted journals. Yeah. And I, I think, like, it's interesting to me that, like, a journal as itself is kind of, like, the most open-ended thing in the world in a way. But I also feel like leave it to the guy that works for the government to have redacted uh, <laughs> <laughs> redacted information put up. Um, but I, I also think, like, 
like what what it does for me to read it and what it sees like when i think about artists and actually i'll use this opportunity to get on rick about it uh i've done i did a studio visit with him uh in his in his home space and i was like dude i just feel like like have you written about your material like have you worked written about what you're doing and he kind of just looked at me like i was a jerk like (laughs) it was sort of this like like i'm not like it's not that like i feel like rick like you you didn't say like you weren't there yet bro but it was more just like i'm still in the like you're still in it you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And Rick, this is a separate conversation. We'll, we'll, we'll get into it. But <laughs> I just feel like that, like there's not a lot of artists that even like to write either even a, to write in general, be right about maybe their own art or even see write adjacently to their own art. Mm-hmm. And so I'm curious, like what have the journals felt like once that was like, especially the first time you did it compared to now, like what has it felt like to have like your own writing and it ha- clearly be bearing, being paralleled with the work of, of that time? Yeah, I mean, so I, you know, contrary to maybe my like verbose self on art brunch, um, I, I don't talk very much. <laughs> like I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty reserved over here. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a pretty reserved person, especially like in groups. Um, you know, one on one, you can kind of get me going, but like group situations, I tend to sit back and, and listen. Um, and that's just kind of my my general nature. Um, and a lot of a lot of the impulse for the zine, um, I, I feel like I'm given probably like five or six different creation stories of this of this zine stuff. But uh, Good. at least <laughs> at least one of these one of the impulses was to you know just share with people that I I knew, but I didn't necessarily think knew me as well as I could let them, mm. I guess. Uh, mm. And so um, making myself uh, allowing myself to be vulnerable to to, to friends um, was a part a part of this. Um, and those journals are part of that as well. Uh, but like I said, um, you know, with the idea of dropping off this like uh, manuscript of uh, inner thoughts uh, to people that didn't necessarily ask for them, um, I thought the least I could do was like try to relieve, uh, like try to remove the uh, the the worst bits, <laughs> like the the most boring <laughs> parts. Like, um, you know, I I. I didn't want to have to uh, make people sit through the whole sort of journal, um, mm-hmm. uh, and and the editing part, uh, maybe not at the beginning, but it has become uh, uh, an important um, aspect of it. Um, the way you can play with the re- removal um, and the sort of erasure and sort of uh, imposing your current self on your past self uh, in ways. Um, has become a sort of aspect that uh, um, is fun to play with and I think important to the aspect of the work. Um, and this past uh, past year, uh, you know, the, the first year too, I was maybe a little bit uh, hesitant to get too, uh, too much into it. Um, I still am pretty reserved with the editing, but this uh, the volume two and volume three, I started going through the process with the photos as well. So volume one was all the original photos as I uh, kind of developed mm. them. Um, and because uh, the printing for volume two was black and white, uh, I found that I had to go back through my photos, um, you know, and specifically uh, develop them as black and white photos, um, as, you know, and not let the, not let the Xerox do it for me. Um, <laughs> you know, that's a good way to just like ruin a photo. So yeah. <laughs> uh, and what was encouraging about that was uh, maybe not encouraging, but uh, what was nice about that too was it added another layer of that editing where I was going back through the raw images, finding ones that I had overlooked, um, finding ways that my tastes or uh, you know um, yeah my my tastes had kind of changed over the last year. Um, you know, photos that I might have dismissed a year ago now spoke to me in a different way. Mm-hmm. Uh, different angles of uh, of the drone work or different um, areas I was at um, maybe being a little bit more open to a certain uh, mund- mundane or, or blandness uh, initial mundane or blandness of the photo now kind of uh, um, had more interest to me those sorts of things um, definitely so yeah it's uh, I forget exactly where we got started on this. Well, yeah. Well, I, and just the word, like the idea of the redacted journal to me, I'm yeah. like, I'm like thinking of like six different ways to, to kind of reshape it again to the photo work itself. Cause it's like, this is the journal itself. And then you 
reshaping it or redacting it and create making it art is ex in a way exactly what i feel like like even this image right here it's like this is the image of this land but now you are framing it to make it art now it is so there's sort of like a part and parcel to not just your your words which then naturally makes new forms you know just like it does in your words like you're physically the way you remove the stuff which i i personally really like because i feel like like you're not crossing them out like you know like <laughs> like a government document like you are you're just removing them it's just actually redacted and that creates a new form you know and there's beautiful lines that you're manufacturing through these things just because of what happened i imagine so that's like deeply personal lines or lines you just don't feel need to be shared or removed typically uh the lines that get removed are are the most boring bits okay uh, normally. <laughs> so uh, like, like social security numbers and stuff are removed yeah. and you know things like that <laughs> yeah they're generally like you know what i ate this morning or you gotcha. know those sorts of like uh just filler sort of sort of things pet uh, name or like... where you went to high school and your mother's maiden name that's all we yeah. need yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah i mean it's it's interesting as far as the like the redacting stuff goes i mean it's um i yeah i, I don't think there's a whole lot of difference as far as the way i approach most sorts of art stuff um with whether it's photos or or the words and, and things like it's Framing is an, is important, obviously, and a, a lot of it comes down to just a sort of certain like feel uh, for what you're doing, and um, like a feel most importantly of where to stop. Um, mm -hmm. I think you know Something it's kind of like yeah. that. Like um, I don't know, maybe less so with pictures, but um, I mean the picture stuff. I guess it would be framed more like a knowing like what's what's enough in the in the mm -hmm. picture and like um like not pushing too far like not trying to juice it up you know or like, like not looking for that sort of like national geographic sort of like <laughs> picture i've seen a thousand times uh, you know, and knowing like i like this of will and beast. like trusting that sort of thing so totally the thing that comes up for me there is is a conversation uh funnily enough that i don't think we have enough time for but is is this idea of uh fidelity and um, we spoke about this briefly, but uh, the what I'm seeing with these journals is is like what is the level of detail, like what is the level of fidelity that's appropriate, and um, we connect this to the idea of like drone being ultra high fidelity, but also like very limited in scope compared to like a satellite photograph or an aerial plane photographing um and then that plays into this kind of like social aspect of of this project that you're talking about is like this was a way for me to like give personality give love and caring fidelity to people that have like expressed interest in it and i just didn't quite know like which level of me they really wanted so i'm giving them like the next level of my fidelity which is this these writings and these pictures and I'm doing it with intimacy. So they know like I love them too. And I think that that's like really sweet. And in our most intimate relationships, we have the most like intimate granular fidelities that sound boring and don't make sense to anybody. But yeah, like the closer you get with somebody, the more you want to be seen in high definition. Yeah, I mean, I, like, there's, there's definitely like, uh, so I mean, my hesitation, you know, I might speak a little bit to my hesitation with uh, sharing uh, widely. Yeah. Um, like they, I, and I, I hope that they maintain this. Uh, I mean, I, I don't, I think if they, if they lose, if they lose this, then I probably, uh, hopefully, I'll stop making them. But you know, right now, they're made with a sense of sort of. Uh, well, I mean, like a sense of love in, yeah. in that way. Like it's a sense of sharing and um, uh, and vulnerability and trying to be known um, in a way to people that I care about. Um, and hopefully that, uh, I mean, it's uh, it's yet to be seen whether that translates to people that don't actually know me, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, and uh, don't actually, uh, you know, whether it's actually translatable to people that, um that uh you know i've never met before so that's something that's scary but also a sort of exciting uh bit from allowing a, a wider 
audience to see it um whether they've actually yeah. seen it or not i'm not sure but well that um, that is that is a huge part i think of the artist's way and and something that i know uh we talk about on art brunch and and something that comes up all the time is like people won't love you if you don't provide avenues for them to uh but like it is it is like a, a really intimate and kind of raw process of like okay yeah i guess nobody <laughs> does like me you know and and th probably you'll feel like that for a long time you know because these things take time like the photographs are such good entry you know gateway drugs to you and then and then now to know that like if you want more uh it's no longer too bad it's if you want more like this is the more that i'm willing to give yeah congratulations for that man like <laughs> for real like that's some real shit like i don't know what it's yeah. gonna do for you but congratulations for for feeling that yeah well i mean some the the anecdote that i use is uh like have you ever gotten uh, uh just like bad presents from <laughs> like yeah <laughs> from like people you care about like family or friends or whatever for like, sure you, so you oh. just get this present and you're just like what makes you think i would want <laughs> i would want this you know it's very nice of you to who give do you present. think i am yeah but like uh but like this is not something that i would uh expect to receive um I, not that that's i mean that's I, it has happened to me a couple of times but uh it occurred to me one time that you know the reason i the reason that happens is because i don't let myself be known you know like no wonder my you know distant relative gives me this awful gift because like my distant relative has no idea who i am you mm -hmm. know um and so you know i just you know there's I, I guess I'm trying to find hacks as far as like how to allow that to happen um uh allow myself to be known um so and this is kind of one of those sorts of things I don't know if that's a, a useful <laughs> oh, anecdote totally. or not but uh yeah for sure yeah, and we're happy to be a part of it too. You know, obviously. So, <laughs> thanks for being well, this here. Is, yeah, this is uh, <laughs> this is a nice soft landing. So I, I appreciate you guys being receptive to it. So I don't know what I would I would probably just I would leave I would leave if you guys started being too mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can just disconnect. Yeah, Take, yeah, just close the laptop sometime whenever. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, well I love this soft landing idea, Rick. Is that is that a good segue into our our final? section yeah i think so i think that um to you know I, I like to talk about kind of the the things that we experience with that is is you'd think that we could get somewhere in an hour and a half yeah <laughs> you you think that we could provide some clarity on aaron and maybe we did you know i know i, like it, think, we did. I think we did right um yeah. but it just creates more questions really yeah. So, so this show, <laughs> this show often, uh, you know, kind of challenges that idea of fidelity and how do we get to know an artist? And uh, fundamentally, the reason that we explore that is because most of the fundamental systems that are used to get to know artists are incredibly ineffective. And maybe we're just adding to that, that lineage <laughs> and to that history. And that's a good art historical lineage to be a part of. Uh, Rijan Proto says, hacker, exclamation <laughs> <Yeah>. point. <laughs> um, 